The year is 1955. The Brooklyn Dodgers defeat the New York Yankees in seven games to take the World Series. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. leads the first major U.S. civil rights movement, a bus boycott down in Montgomery, Alabama. Minimum wage is a dollar, a gallon of gasoline is 23 cents, and a black and white television goes for $99.99. And at the top of the music charts, we've got the ballad of Davy Crockett. If you were to ask anyone in 1955 what a gentleman looks like, they'd probably say Cary Grant. The well-dressed actor has been appearing in Hollywood movies for over 20 years, and he just came out with his latest movie, To Catch a Thief, with Grace Kelly. It's safe to say in 1955, the idea of being a gentleman was as strong as it had ever been. So what happened? I mean, here we are a mere 70 years later, and it seems like the idea of the gentleman has disappeared. So let's start things off by defining what do we mean by the word gentleman? So a gentleman, per definition, is any man of good and courteous conduct. Now, originally the word gentleman was the lowest rank of the landed gentry of England, ranking below an esquire and above a yeoman. The rank of gentleman comprised the younger sons of the younger sons of peers and the younger sons of a baronet, a knight, and an esquire in perpetual succession. So in a nutshell, a gentleman was someone who had a heritage, who had a blood relation in some way to a bit of nobility. That being said, the gentleman didn't really have any claims. He perhaps didn't have any money, but he did have his name. He did have this title, the gentleman, which separated him from the commoners. Now, as an American in a classless society, that's a joke. <laughs> But seriously, here in the United States, it's not something that we have a history of nobility and titles. So for us, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But in many other more established countries like France and the UK that have a much longer history, the idea that you have heritage, that you have a lineage was a big deal. Now, the word gentleman was apparently first used in the year 1275, but the word itself actually came into more common usage after the year 1413. Why? Because Henry V passed a law which required that in all original writs of action, personal appeals, and indictments, that the estate, degree, or mystery of the defendant must be stated. Basically, if anything was getting written down, you needed to declare, it needed to be clear who the individual was. And not everyone's going to be an earl, not everyone's going to be a duke, especially if you're a lesser son. Anyone watch Game of Thrones? Yeah, what happens to all the second, third, fourth, fifth sons? Well, if you can't marry them off, they go off to seek their fortune. But these guys wanted to be known, they wanted to be really clear with everyone that they are not a common man. Now, traditionally, this wasn't an issue because you had these second sons, you had these third, fourth, fifth, seventh sons, whatever it is, they were living on the land and they were working it under their fathers. But this became really unattractive after England got decimated with the Black Death and there were wars overseas that you could go over there and make a fortune. So basically, you got these men of noble blood out there trying to make a name for themselves out there in those continental wars, or maybe they're just trying to make their way up in a court of a really high noble house. Point being is they wanted to be known as gentlemen. And by the 16th century, the gentry, as they were called, had pretty much established themselves as a distinct order. Now, what about the right to bear arms? This is where it gets a little bit confusing. And there was a time period where only nobles were able to raise armies to be able to carry weapons. But the idea is that gentlemen had the right to bear arms. And there was a really a fluid situation, 16th, 17th century. And basically was if you carried arms, you were known as a gentleman. Gentlemen could carry arms. So you kind of see it was like a circle right here. And uh, the idea of a gentleman being associated with nobility, that pretty much disappeared. And it was because it was well known that if you could afford it, if you could afford arms, if you also could afford not to work and be able to have time of leisure, you were considered a gentleman. So then we're entering the 19th century, and this is when the word gentleman really made a big deal. It was a sign of status. If you were a gentleman, again, you didn't have to work. You had means, you could bear arms, you could carry a weapon, and you were just thought of as a step above the common man, especially the merchants or the people that had to work labor with their hands. And in fact, if anyone's familiar with the history of cricket, you've probably heard the terms gentleman and player, and you know what the difference is. A gentleman plays cricket, but he doesn't need to be paid. He just does this because he enjoys it versus a player is actually play. They make money with it and that is not considered to be gentlemanly. What you think about it is 
pretty damn stuck up. But yeah, that's that's the way it was. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash the like button. I appreciate it when you interact with the videos and it lets those YouTube gods know that, hey, this video is worth watching. Now, the word gentleman, its meaning and its usage did start to change. In fact, in 1714, Sir Richard Steele wrote, the appellation of gentleman is never to be affixed to a man's circumstances, but to his behavior in them. And this is key because what happened is it started to evolve that it wasn't viewed as just gentlemen were this because they were born gentlemen, that they had descended from nobility. No, gentlemen were viewed, it was viewed as something that you could become based off your behavior. This was further reinforced during the Victorian period. Whenever we had a number of rules, we had a number of distinctions that were formed between being able to see classes. So you could dress in a matter of a class, but did you act that way? Did you know all the hidden rules? Did you know the mannerisms? And a gentleman was aware of these. He was trained in these. He understood why they were there, even though they seemed like they were invisible rules that may seem, you know, not important to someone not from that class. He understood why they were there. And he also, you know, he guarded them. He made sure that others followed them. So as you can see, we had strong history, strong usage up till about the First World War. Well, first up, let's look at who was pushing the idea of the gentleman. This was English history, not American history. And this made sense because England was the world's superpower for a few hundred years. But guess what? After World War I, who started to emerge? It was the United States as a superpower. And we didn't have a history of class. We were in large part, we like to think of ourselves as a classless society. So the idea of a gentleman, even though many people would aspire to it in the 1920s, 1930s, even into the 1950s, it wasn't something that was genuinely American. In fact, if you go back to 1955, there was a movie that came out that was much more pivotal than To Catch a Thief, which is a great movie. I love Cary Grant, but Rebel Without a Cause. Now, this movie was a pioneer at its time. This was dealing with the angst of being a teenager, of being misunderstood. In fact, the hero we see here, James Dean, very vulnerable someone that wasn't afraid to cry, to show his emotions, something that a gentleman oftentimes doesn't do. This was a guy that dressed very brash, very loud. He was, you know, the rebel. He was a bit of a hoodlum. And this was someone that was getting arrested. These were not gentlemanly traits, yet they were being openly, not just openly celebrated, but the mass, the young people absolutely latched onto this. They connected a lot more with James Dean than they did the gentleman, you know, Cary Grant. Now, gents, before I reveal the five reasons why I think gentlemen pretty much have gone extinct, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Vitaman. Now, if you haven't heard of Vitaman, they're a natural men's grooming company out of Australia using ingredients that just work. Seriously, gents, these are natural and organic ingredients made specifically for men over the age of 40 that want to look their best. And our best-selling product, our thinning hair treatment kit. Because the reality is, as you age, as you get older, your hair starts to thin. It can happen in your 20s, in your 30s, definitely in your 40s. In fact, more than half of men over the age of 40 are dealing with thinning hair issues. Now, the Vitaman Thinning Hair Kit contains over 35 natural Australian ingredients engineered to strengthen, volumize, and thicken fine and thinning hair. Gents, this is a natural, non-invasive way to deal with thinning hair. Seriously, if you're in your 40s and 50s out there single again, dating, you want to look good, guys, look at our wrinkle remover, look at our eye cream. All of our lotions, all of our serums are specifically developed for men that are dealing with skin issues and want to get them solved. Great products. I use them. I love them. And again, I back up everything with a 100% money back guarantee. And I say that because I'm one of the owners of Vitamin. I stand behind every product we put out. So whether or not you're grabbing our natural deodorant, whether or not you want a hair product, whether or not you just simply want a great face wash, you want some skin lotion. Guys, we've got you covered over at Vitamin. So use that link in the description of today's video. Go over there and get the best deal on the web. So what happened? Why has the gentleman started to disappear? Well, the number one reason I think it has started to disappear, especially after the 1950s, the 1960s, is it was no longer a useful indicator of social status. Seriously, I mean, if you think about the word, why was it used? People wanted to set themselves apart from the commoner. And that may have worked in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, when we had a very rigid society. But we started seeing the upheavals in the 1960s, definitely the 1970s. The whole idea of being a guy in a suit, looking like you're part of the crowd, this wasn't attractive. A lot of women were simply looking for something different. When people were looking for creativity, they're looking for a business partner, they're looking for someone to, yeah, you 
you, you could definitely go with a guy that was a gentleman. He's probably going to be very dependable. But if you want somebody that's creative, if you want somebody that's thinking outside the box, it's probably not going to be that guy in the gray flannel suit. So the idea of a gentleman as a status marker, as something that you could dependably say, hey, this is what I want to be like. It shifted. It changed. It wasn't what we had this idea of a gentleman anymore. The rules all of a sudden got thrown out and it was the rule breakers that were all of a sudden at the top. We saw this in the 1980s, all of a sudden coming out of Silicon Valley. We saw people that simply didn't look like the typical gentleman. We saw men that didn't act like the gentleman. We saw all of a sudden movies that started shifting throughout the 1980s, 1990s into the 21st century. We saw who was on top, basically their vision and their idea and their mannerisms change. All of a sudden, it was the Gordon Geckos. It was the guys on Wall Street that looked like gentlemen, but definitely didn't act like them. Then all of a sudden, we saw the 1990s of these guys coming out of Silicon Valley. We saw the dot-com bubble. These guys didn't even dress like gentlemen, and they sure as heck didn't wait their turn in line. They were going out there, and they were grabbing it. And this is what people started to aspire towards. And that takes me to the second reason. All of a sudden, our role models shifted. And it's always interesting. Does Hollywood copy lines? Life or does life imitate Hollywood? But we started seeing this circle again in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. We saw what was on television, what was being marketed as, hey, this is what we should aspire to. All of a sudden, the gentleman fell out of favor, not only the way that men were dressing, but the way that they were behaving. And I'm not going to say it's all bad. There definitely was some negative. I think a lot of the men that we saw, fathers especially in the 1980s and 1990s, were basically displayed as buffoons. But there was also a lot of good, a lot of more complex characters that we were able to see them fully instead of just seeing the one-dimensional gentleman, which had been pushed on us as the being the ideal. All of a sudden, we saw all the different colors. We saw all the different flavors, all the different types of people of men that are out there. Now, the third reason I think the gentleman is going extinct is unfortunately a lot of the behaviors that work in smaller groups can be taken advantage in larger networks. So, when you work in a company and there's only 10 people, 15, maybe even 100 people, if you are a great hard worker, if you're somebody that actually gets things done, you build up a reputation and it's hard yet. You're able to move up and advance. But when you're in a larger business, whenever you know now we're working through the computer all the time, a lot of times you've got people that are busting their ass. You've probably had this happen to you and all of a sudden your boss takes your credit. You've got peers that are you know, basically aren't sharing the wins with you and all of a sudden you're getting passed for promotion even though it should have been you. And so, a lot of these behaviors of a gentleman, not simply tooting your own horn, not raising awareness of what you've accomplished, all of a sudden that started working against a lot of guys. We'd also see people take advantage and even mock gentleman behavior. Some of you guys have taken a lady out and then you pay for everything because you're old school that way and come to find out she was just looking for a free meal. You were taking advantage of and she brags to all of her friends. I'm not saying this happens all the time, but some of you guys have told me about, you know, stories like this. I mean, and, and the thing is, as we expand our networks. As we start to interact with more people, we have more opportunity, but we also have more opportunity for being taken advantage of. And unfortunately, if you rely on somebody's word, if you rely on it, assuming that people always have good intentions, you can be taken advantage of. And this is where being a gentleman can sometimes not pay. And that takes me to point four, which is open hostility by a lot of people in modern society. And you can call it feminism, you can call it whatever you want, but there are certain behaviors by gentlemen in which groups view this as, you know, you're placing ownership maybe on women, that you are implying that they are weaker by opening the door. Now, for me, I open doors for anyone. It's just a sign of respect and something nice to do. And I think that a lot of you guys still continue to do that. But certain behaviors, especially if it's, you know, linked to the patriarchy, this is viewed as negative. And being a gentleman and the idea of a gentleman uh, is something that's been attacked by a number of groups. And a lot of men have been fearful, scared that they are going to, you know, just simply be attacked. And so, they decided to abandon a lot of those ideals. Now, this next point I'm pulling from evolutionary biology. And in case you don't know, that was my undergrad major. I studied a lot of this stuff. But uh, we've been on this planet a long time. 7 million years, if you look at what hominins, uh, and if you go back 200,000 years, Homo sapiens and civilized society, what, maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000 years, depending on how you count it. Point being is the idea of a gentleman is just a few hundred years old. It's a very thin mask over 
the deep, dark brute that is within us, the one that had to survive, that had to fight, that had to kill, that has survived multiple generations. And that very thin mask was always something that could easily be disturbed and thrown off if we're put in a tough situation. Now, personally, I try to hold true to a number of gentlemanly ideals. And in fact, I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below what you think the ideals, what are some great rules that every gentleman should follow? I'll probably make a video on this. But when I signed up for the United States Marine Corps, I'd, I'd watched an officer and a gentleman. I always had this ideal of being something greater than just simply, you know, the, the physical that I am. And I have these ideals that I tried to live up to. And for me personally, that's why I love the idea of a gentleman, the idea that you can transcend the flesh, the idea that you can be more than just simply these parts, that the sum of them can create something great, create something that could live on through its mannerisms, through the ideas, through the thoughts, and uh, just simply the way that we interact with others. So what video to watch next? Why did men stop wearing pocket watches? Did you ever wonder why did we go to the wristwatch? Why did we stop wearing the pocket watch? Guys, I got you covered in this video and I break out the history. I break out the details. I think you're going to enjoy it. Go check it out here. It's a good one.